the question is elevations formed on the tooth surface leading to occlusal developmental grooves are okay so when you take a posterior tooth rather your molars and your premolars and you look at them at the occlusal surface what you will notice is that you have elevations which are present and these elevations have are present on both the cusps and rather they are present both on the buccal as well as the lingual surface and these elevations lead or rather converge if you look at it from the proximal aspect these elevations they converge towards a point where you have a depression so the depression is what is called as a groove whereas the elevations are what are called as cusps okay so cusps are your main two uh, force bearing structures these cusps what happens is they have a lot of enamel which is present because of the presence of so much enamel these cusps tend to be very strong and they have uh, a lot of strength to bear the masticatory as forces and stresses which are going to be generated that is the reason when you have the destruction or a fracture of a cusp it is difficult to restore such a tooth because your main tooth bearing or main force bearing structure unit in the entire tooth has been damaged apart from that tubercles are also considered to be elevations which are present on the tooth surface however a tubercle is going to be a very small information in uh, elevation it is very nodular it is something tiny in nature and it does not represent your develop developmental lobe all your cusps are a representation of one of the developmental lobes and each developmental lobe gives rise to one tooth structure or rather one part of the tooth structure so your mesiobuccal cusp is developed from your mesiobuccal lobe the distobuccal cusp is developed from the distobuccal lobe so when it comes to the premolars you have three lobes that give rise to the buccal cusp whereas one lobe gives rise to the palatal cusp that is the that is how you identify or that how each of these cusps are important during development now if you can see this the cusp is over here so this is your cusp which is an elevation the cusp has like i told you it is going towards the center and it is converging towards the center so each cusp gives rise to what is called as a triangular ridge okay this ridge coincides with the ridge of the opposite cusp and gives rise to what is called as a transverse ridge so ideally this cusp coincides with the triangular cusp of the of this one triangular ridge of this one and gives rise to a transverse ridge however if you had only which is and this is a feature present only in the maxillary molars you have a ridge from the mesiolingual cusp extending to the distobuccal cusp and that cusp that sorry ridge and this ridge is what is called as an oblique ridge so all of these are elevations depressions would be grooves pits and fossae so the fossa are the areas which are present towards the ends of the teeth that is the mesial and the distal end pits are the deepest portion of your developmental grooves and grooves you can have main primary grooves as well as accessory grooves the primary grooves are a representation of where your cusps end so that is an area of demarcation between your lobes your developmental lobes that is where your developmental grooves end up being there and the deepest portion of a groove is what is called as a pit so coming to the question over here elevations found on the tooth surface leading to occlusal developmental groove is nothing but your cusps okay